Over the years, many people have asked me, what is Regions Beyond and what is it all about? Well, Regions Beyond was born out of a work of God that started in Southern Africa in a small African village where a headman gave his life to Jesus. And from that small beginning, we began to see a family of churches growing in rural Africa, but in also the great cities of the world. And our hope has been that Regions Beyond would develop into a diverse family of churches joined together in apostolic partnership. We would love our values to be seen in the people who carry our vision across the nations. Not just words on paper, but through our lifestyles, the things that we carry, the way that we treat one another, the things that we believe in, the things that we hold dear. I have longed to see those in individuals more than in a document. Vision is fueled by values. When we start to see these things happening, it stirs in us a desire to want to fulfill the purposes of God. And it also answers the question, how do we do that? And so these 11 values, these distinctives, have been so key to us just to help us set our course and maintain a true biblical understanding to our mission. In every culture and in every generation, for those who want to follow Jesus Christ, we are set this challenge. Are we going to be faithful to the scriptures and the God who has revealed himself therein? Or are we going to be faithful to the ever-changing culture around us that is always seeking to see us conformed into its image? Paul wrote to Timothy with some of his final words that we have recorded and urged Timothy to be faithful to the scriptures, to continue in what he had learned and had come to believe. And as regions beyond, this injunction sits at the very heart of who we are, that we would be those who are faithful, not to the ever-changing culture around us, but to the unchanging God who has revealed himself to us in his scriptures. Grace is God's unconditional love and acceptance that we don't deserve and uh, it's so wonderful to be part of a movement that is so rich in grace and to know that love and acceptance as individuals but also to be fueled by um, grace in our relationships with one another and in all that we're doing in the nations. It's just amazing that we don't have to earn the favour of God or do what we do to please God but that we know that we're totally secure in him as his sons and daughters. We want to see as a, an organisation, as people together, as churches together, that we are living as people that are not powerless. We want to be Christ-centred, we want to be full of Jesus, we want to be full of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit does this wonderful thing. He sets a fire ablaze within our soul and he helps us to reveal what heaven is like. He helps us to reveal who Jesus is. When we're full of the Holy Spirit, that's what we look like. We look like Jesus Christ. There for one another's success, I got together with a number of the church leaders. The thing that I know so much about it was that when they got together, they were so deeply involved in each other's lives and uh, one of them was actually having a really difficult time uh, just then and I can remember uh, three of the others were just chatting about it and praying for him and uh, you know they were in tears and it was an experience for me I never forget because I came away from there thinking that's how to build church and that's helped to build a group of churches with leaders that love each other like that. And we really did love each other. We're built on relationships, really. We all function not by a kind of hierarchy of who's in what position, but we build together because we're friends. One of the things that really attracted me to Regions Beyond was the desire 
to embrace diversity. And I've learned so much since being a part of Regions Beyond. And I love to see the churches wanting to be multicultural, wanting to be different to societal norms. And, and I think we're a work in progress. I think we have amazing stories from around the world of where we've seen this happen and barriers break down. Here in our own nation, we're still working really hard to see this happen, to move from being a, a multicultural group on a Sunday morning to a truly diverse community seven days a week. In the gospel, in Jesus, we are all the same. We all in need of a savior, we're all sinners, and yet together we can all come to the throne of God through His grace and through what Jesus has done for us. The whole um, distinctive in Regions Beyond Churches is remembering the poor. And we've got to think of empowering the poor, empowering individuals. And as we go to different nations, different situations, church planting situation, we keep hitting this problem of finance and needy people around and I think empowering them is very important and helping them to start businesses, helping them to use their creativity that God has given to them, fathering them and giving them that encouragement that they need and the vision that they need to really believe God for themselves, you know, that God has a plan for their lives and God wants to use them for the purposes of God to be co-equal partners in the global mission. When you look at the scriptures, the Bible doesn't talk about just settling and just building where you are. It's talking about having this incredible tension of reaching the nations as well as reaching the local. Every local church should be committed to reaching its own town or village or city, but also should be committed to reaching different parts of the world where God has given them faith for. We need to be sending our best. The best are the people that God has equipped in our midst and are ready and have faith and believe that they are called into other parts of the world to reach the nations. We always should be reproducing and believing God that he will send more people out to the nations from our churches. The Great Commission is about out there and it's also about here at home as well. This value is not trying to get lots of people to serve and to fill up our rosters for kids work and those kinds of things, although we do need people to serve there. This is about helping people to understand that they are called to be servants. And actually it's part of our identity. And as we help people to understand that, out of that we'll get enthusiasm because people will understand this is who they're called to be, not simply something that they're called to do. So as we begin to train and shape and help people to understand it, what they want to do is gladly to serve one another and to serve wider than the communities that they're in, in their workplaces, in their families, that we are servants and we're called to do that with great enthusiasm because we understand that as we serve one another, we serve Jesus Christ. We very much believe that God raises and appoints leaders into the local church, what he calls teams who are there for each other, who are there to strengthen each other, to be accountable to one another. One of the things that makes leadership incredibly beautiful is where it's marked by humility. Jesus said, didn't he, he came to serve. He primarily came as a servant and actually to save the lost as a ransom for many. And Jesus' example is what sets the pattern for leadership, that we are there as those who are leaders to serve, humbly to seek the good of others, to seek the uplifting of others and to fuel people into their purposes in God through the local church. In his letter to the Ephesians, the Apostle Paul tells us something quite remarkable about the church. He writes, For Christ so loved the church that he gave himself up for her. That tells us something very special, that as Jesus made his way to the cross, he didn't have in mind a collection of thousands and millions of individuals who one day follow him into glory. He had in mind a people, he had in mind a family, and that family will be representing him in every community, every village, every town, across the nations of the world. And that's why we believe, as a group of churches, as a movement, in the centrality of the local church in the purposes of God. It's not just about you and me doing our thing in a private corner, it's about what we are together.
Why is the prophetic so important to us? Well, Jesus said to his disciples that my spirit will show you what is yet to come. And if we don't stay current, if we don't stay with the purposes of God, we begin to stagnate. The prophetic comes as strengthening, encouragement. It sets our course and it clarifies vision. And so the prophetic gift in our midst and holding on to prophetic words, highlighting them, stirring our people with them, gives fire to our vision. Even for me personally, my whole journey began with a single prophetic word that God was going to raise me up and send us to the daisies of Africa, a people who were many, a people with no hope, and we were to bring hope to the hopeless. This shaped us and set our course. And so right through our journey, we want to hold on to this high value of being shaped by the prophetic. I hope that what you've just seen has really stirred your heart and unlocked something inside you that wants to draw you into the purposes of God and joining us in this great adventure. I hope that as we join together, as we watch over one another, we stay full of humble, prayerful attitude that we will see many, many more New Testament churches planted across the world. And then through them, that we're able to see the kingdom of God come. Thank you for sharing in this with us. God bless you and see you in the nations.